Welcome everyone to um, our Buckinghamshire Business First Talking Heads podcast. So as many of our listeners will know, um, Buckinghamshire Business First, in partnership with Visit Buckinghamshire, has been really quite heavily involved in supporting uh, tourism and hospitality businesses over the last decade. One of the businesses who's become more and more engaged with our um, BBF business community as a as a result of this work is is Moogies. And I'm delighted to introduce our guest today, Helen uh, Barrett, who is their head of marketing and sustainability. Helen, would you like to tell our listeners a little bit about Moogies and your amazing uh, collection of pubs and restaurants? (laughs) Thank you, Philippa. Yes, so um, Moogies was established in 2013 and um, the objective by Paul Mitchell, who's the owner and director of Moogies, was to really look for underperforming or even closed pub restaurants in villages around Aylesbury and through investment really turn those back into thriving businesses at the heart of the community. And we currently have four venues. Um, We've got the Black Boy in Oving, the Russell Arms in Butler's Cross, the Dinton Hermit in Ford and the Eight Bells in Long Crendon. Um, All very traditional British pubs serving great food and drink. Um, so that's that's the, the history of the business. Um, and did you say you would like me to talk a little bit about the so sustainability? One of, well, one of, one of the standout things about that portfolio of pubs is your ethos around Moogies being mindful. So could you fill us in on a bit more of the detail around that concept, how it came about, what are your, your challenges, etc.? Okay, yeah. So it really stemmed back to the first lockdown, 2020, March. I remember it well. All the pubs were shut. We couldn't trade. Um, And it was a really difficult time, but it did give us a really unique opportunity, certainly the senior team, to to think about the business and perhaps ways that we would want to operate differently as and when we were allowed to reopen um, we didn't realise how long it was going to be before we could reopen at the time. But so anyway, we we had that opportunity. And at the same time, um, on the news, there was a lot more coverage about the climate crisis. Lots of interviews with Greta Thunberg and um, David Attenborough and the Extinction Rebellion um, yeah. protests were taking place. And it was becoming much more of a mainstream debate. And I have two children. The eldest is at university. The youngest is is 18 now. But back then she was 16. And watching the TV as we were confined to our houses every day, there would be something about the climate uh, crisis. And she became really distressed about it to the point that, you know, two years on, she's actually about to go to university and study sustainability. So it really had a huge impact on her. And she put us as a household under a lot of pressure to make changes into what we buy and how we recycled and, and so on and so forth. And I happened to have a conversation with Paul uh, at that time and he was going through a really similar thing at home as well. And we both said, well, if we're feeling morally and ethically this is the right thing to do in our private lives, then what's different about it from a business perspective? Um, And so we agreed at that point that that was going to be a big change when we got to reopening, that we would be really focusing high on how we could improve our sustainability and being mindful was born. So that's that's what we call our commitment to operating as sustainably as possible and always keeping our staff and our customers and the local community and then the broader environment really at the forefront of our minds when we're making any business decisions Um, and my role was changed so I was head of marketing but that was then bolted on sustainability which sits really nicely with marketing obviously what we're doing we would like to be able to communicate externally to our customers so they know what we're trying to do Um, and I started off really by looking at what we were doing as a business already that could kind of classify as a sustainable practice and capturing that and then looking at what perhaps short term, medium term and long term initiatives we, we, could, we could look at uh, to improve that sustainability. And having done that, it, it became clear that a lot of them could be grouped under the same heading. And so we established and we still use now seven pillars. So each pillar has a heading and all the initiatives we look at fall within one of those headings. And they are relevant for any business. It's not exclusive to hospitality. Um, and they are reducing our waste, improving our recycling, looking at how we impact on the environment, the suppliers we choose to buy from and what we buy are 
uh, people, our staff and how we look after them, the local community and how we interact and support the local community and health and well-being, which, which for us is about things like looking at no and low alcohol offerings or it might be putting allergen information on our menus for people with allergies and looking at more vegan and vegetarian dishes for the people with, uh, with that dietary requirement or, or interest or need. Um, um, and here we are two years on, we're still working on these these things, we still uh, use those seven headings, if you like, and it's an ingrained part of our business now. In terms of ch challenges, you, I think you mentioned yeah. some of the challenges. Yeah. Um, I suppose that the, there's obviously the the challenge around cost and and our being mindful commitment does say to operating as sustainably as possible. So the reality is some of the things that we would like to do are cost prohibitive to us commercially. Um, that said, there are other initiatives that have been very simple to introduce that instantly save us money. So one example would be as soon as we reopened, we'd made the decision to remove all plastic straws, all straws. There were no straws going to be in the business. Well, that's an instant cost saving. Um, mm. Other other initiatives we've been able to look at cost us a little bit more money, but we've been able to offset it. So initially our menus, we moved to a carbon neutral printer because that was something we, we felt was important, but they cost more per sheet, but we introduced QR codes. So overall the print quantity that we looked at was reduced and therefore, you know, you could offset the, the cost increase. So sometimes you can offset it and sometimes things are too expensive. And I would say then maybe just log them and come back to them in the future, because going back to that printing example, there were at the time seven printers in the country that had the carbon neutral uh, they could say that they were carbon neutral uh, as approved yeah. by the woodland trust and i looked again maybe about six months ago and now there are i can't, I can't you give you a figure but there's lots of printers now because everybody's realizing the the, the companies and, and individuals are looking more for sustainable um products and so on to support so yeah that means that economies of scale will be kicking in and those prices items and things that you might be looking at will come down so log it and come back to it um, and ch ch changing behaviors is another challenge um, we'd been operating for several years on a in a specific way of working and to try and get people to change those habits is, is sometimes difficult um, we had already been recycling our wine bottles glass beer bottles cans and so on and when we reopened in may 21 i think we had just prior to that, we had seven bins on average per pub and we now have 17 bins. So we're recycling our ink cartridges, we're recycling our bubble wrap, we're recycling uh, crisp packets, uh, all manner of things. Now we're separating our food waste. And and initially that's that's there's some resistance because yeah. it's different. But two years down the line, it's done its habit now and nobody questions it. It's just the way of working. So that's a challenge to start with but it's worth persevering with um yeah and that those first steps that you take and it's really it's really interesting listening to your story because 2020 uh and greta thunberg and whatever had a profound effect on us at bbf as well in terms of it re it does matter it it does matter it, it matters to her it matters to the world we're trying to bring up our children in and it matters in terms of the legacy we're going to leave behind us but those first steps to saying we want to change and you're not going to be able to change it all in a in one sweep it is making the small steps and considering everything you do it's really interesting so so we don't print menus but we print um uh, agendas or we we print you know uh, uh, workshop um briefs and whatever we made the mindful to, to use your word, decision that we do that on paper that that is degradable uh, um if we order collateral like pens or whatever it's got to have the credentials that meet our company's ethos yeah um, and you know did the same so you know we've we've signed up to the race to zero in order to drive down our carbon footprint which you know on reflection 
four years ago, I'd got every excuse in the book for why I wouldn't do that because we were in serviced offices, we were doing that, you know, it's all outside of our control, which really were just barriers that we were putting in our own way. Um, mm. Because year on year since then, we've driven down the carbon footprint and not not everything sticks. It's like you're saying, you know, sometimes you have to, OK, that one's too difficult. It Financially, we can't do that. But let's go back to it in a while. Yeah. So I, yeah. I really um, empathise with the, the and I think any business in any sector, it's those first steps. You just got to commit that it's what you want to do. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think that that's in terms of the, the first tip I would give to a company that's thinking about going down this route is that you 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 do need to put a dedicated perhaps dedicated resource against it and and at a quite a senior level as well I believe because yeah. that's the way to ensure focus and momentum throughout the business by by leading from the top um we we I I I would agree and I think you need a Jiminy Cricket within your business that is um that you 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 allow to call you out and to 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 just say is are we doing the right thing is is that in line with what we set out to do that that yeah. that advocate within your business that will be passionate about it and bring everybody with them yes i mean it's interesting you mentioned that because we've we've now also noticed a, a benefit we've had our first member of staff join us uh, a new manager uh, actually working at the Dinton Hermit and one of the reasons that she gave for leaving where she was working currently and actively seeking to work with us was because of her passion for sustainability and her recognition that we were genuinely making efforts and and that that was really important and I think that's an increasing trend mm -hmm. that the younger people in particular if you want to attract them you've got to be in this game so yeah. Yeah, uh, that's a new trend, definitely. Yeah, and I I think it's it's win win, isn't it? it? Again, you're right. I think it acts as a a magnet for people to work with your business. It acts as a magnet for people to deal with your business, and it is definitely the right thing to do, isn't it? Yes. It's, it's such a yeah, such a win win. Yes. So last last year, our paths um crossed Helen at our AGM at the BBF AGM which was themed around the future workforce and then just last month I think we met up again at our MPs briefing with um, Greg Smith where you were amongst a host of businesses who were kind enough to come together to discuss um, some of the challenges facing businesses in rural Buckinghamshire and, and those were opportunities to make sure that the business voice could be heard by by people who could influence government policy and 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 um, you know help help national government support tourism and hospitality. There are so many challenges mm -hmm. for the hospitality sector, and I I think at the MPs briefing we spoke about staff recruitment and retention. We spoke about um, EV charging points um, and a multitude of other things. We, in general, uh, Buckinghamshire Business First doesn't get many pubs or restaurants reaching out for support or help. And I know it can be all consuming running um, the business. But what what made you reach out? What, what support have you had from Buckinghamshire Business First or any of the, the programmes that, that were running? Um, and and. Would you be able to articulate the benefits to others of, of doing what you did in terms of reaching out? It's, it's often difficult, isn't it, to take the first step. Mm. Um, so what did you get out of it? Uh, so the, my first interaction was probably uh, around July last year. And so we'd already started on our being mindful journey. And I, ha I had a meeting actually with a lady from Visit Box. Yeah. And Lucy. I took, took, that's right. And I talked to her a, a bit about Moogies and we talked about being mindful. And through that conversation, um, she flagged up a whole host of 
of things that I didn't know about, you know, whether it would be webinars. Did you realise that we do webinars? And um, did you realise there was a low carbon workspace grant? And did you, did you know about uh, I met Dan Cope? And uh, you know, so there were things that we were trying to do almost on our own. And it's a lot easier if you're doing it with somebody else. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, I only I had a conversation with Dan last week and I was going through our latest targets for being mindful and made some suggestions to him about, you know, could we do um, could we do X, Y or Z um, at, in, as ideas, yeah. you know, and, and he would bounce back and say, well, hang on a minute. We've got something in the pipeline on that. Hold this space and I'll, I'll, I'll be able to come back to you and could introduce me to other organisations through the networking events. I've met people who have put me in touch with other organisations connected to sustainability. Um, you know, we, we made a connection through one of the workshops, a lady, nothing to do with hospitality. She's a solicitor, but she's introduced us to somebody who is an expert in recruitment. And we've had, a, you know, a free initial conversation. And that's led to further follow up conversations to really step change how we go about recruitment, which, as we've just said, is hugely mm -hmm. important to us at the moment. So there's the whole networking piece. There's the, are you aware of some grants that are available that we can assist you with? And one of the things we were looking at as well was accessibility. So um, she made me aware of the Accessibility Hub project yeah. that, um, that, that was underway at the time. And to me, that fitted very nicely within the community pillar of our being mindful approach, because they're going to be people within our community who have uh, accessibility issues and we want to be as inclusive in our venues as possible and that led then to me getting involved with the fair for all scheme run by buds and uh, they've come to our venue they've looked at our venue given us some great feedback and given us some suggestions as to how we can just take our our accessibility up a notch well none none of any of that would have happened if i hadn't have had any uh, relationship with bucks business first so mm. i think it's always you know you can Try and do these things on your own, but two heads, as they say, are always better than one. And and you know, multiply that out even more when you're interacting with different parts of of BBF and Visit Bucks. Yeah, and I I think it's that um, when you're when you're operating a business, it, it the, the, instinctively it's heads down, isn't it? And and you're it you're you yourself and perhaps your your immediate team um, are are trying to to work across quite a broad spectrum of expertise and whatever else. And Buckinghamshire Business First was one of the reasons we came into existence. So we came into existence about 11 years ago with business people saying, you know, we we, we don't know all the, the huge raft of support that's available. There's too much and we haven't got the time to mm. sift through it all and find it and what's relevant. And, and so part of what we do is join the dots. So those conversations that you're having with Lucy, she's able to tap back into an understanding of what support might be available for your yeah. business. It's it's wonderful with Moogies because what I've noticed is the conversation is two way now because that conversation you've alluded to with Dan around, you know, maybe having a, a session where business like a, um, a surgery, a, a drop in surgery, surgery idea. Idea, yeah, I think. drop yeah. in surgery idea round, round sort of net zero and, and whatever else. A really, really good idea, a really good idea. And so we can we can take that, take that away, develop that. And, and absolutely, that will start to play in um, over the next few months. So and that's a really constructive relationship where this conversation is two way, because, again, without businesses talking to us and being part of this community um, you know, you, you don't get that. You don't get that um, development. And we are here to support yeah. businesses in, in things you need and also to give volume to your voice. I don't know whether you felt it at the MPs briefing, but because we're because we're an economy of small businesses, sometimes it can feel like you're just a single voice whistling in the wind <laughs> and, and what we try and do is bring that voice together with some volume so that so that a businesses realize you're not on your own and b the people who need to listen listen because there's quite a large volume to it so yeah. um yeah so i, I think mean, I, I was aware of box business first i'd say before july of last year and yeah. I have to say, probably at that time, 
you know, you're busy. You've already got a full calendar, full diary every day to open yourself up to something extra, you know, another meeting, another organisation and so on. Sometimes you, I just haven't got time. And, and I would say for, for, a, for a period of time that I was probably guilty of that. But now I've gone through that process, I would say, yeah, it, it has been invaluable and it is making a big difference for us. And I would encourage businesses out there to engage with um, with Bucks Business First, definitely. Yeah, and, and you've been a star. I mean, one of the things that stands out for me from um, uh, some of the work we've been doing with you is the, uh, the work you're doing with Aylesbury College, where you've been you know, offering work placements to young students and, and where this is all part of the business ecosystem, isn't it? Where we need to think about where our future pipeline of labour is going to come from and, and who can open the door to help you inspire that, that you know, young students thinking about hospitality as the place they might like to work and yes. whatever. It's just that um, I think as businesses, we have a responsibility to develop the ecosystem we want to operate in. Um, and, and you've been very generous with your time in terms of doing that. So, um, yeah, and and I know Paul uh, came out with you to the um, MPs briefing. And then I think I saw Paul, Paul again a couple of weeks ago where um, the county is developing its tourism strategy. Yes. So it was really good for to have Paul out again, sort of inputting into that strategy and making sure the business voice is heard. Absolutely. So, yeah. yeah. So you've participated in the growth program and you got one of our or you're getting one of our growth grants to help um grow one of the businesses. Which one which one is it that that um you're trying to build your room occupancy rates? The Dinton Hermit, yes. So at the Dinton Hermit, we opened that venue in November 2019. It'd been closed for about six years and it needed a, a thorough refurbishment. We started off with the restaurant and the bar opened in, in 2019, as I say, then went into lockdown. Um, hadn't anticipated that and had hoped to refurbish and open the rooms there. There were nine uh, well more than that but it, it doesn't matter how many there were there, there were a certain number of rooms of which we've refurbished eight because we converted one of them into a laundry so we could do our own in-house laundry and reduce transport miles and use chemical free products etc um and so we what we've experienced since the rooms have been open a fantastic occupancy through the peak season because we're so close to some beautiful wedding venues and often we provide that overspill for the friends and family that need accommodation in the area so you know we're block booked out for a large part of of the year but as a new business once that season came to an end what we noticed is that we were pretty strong during the week with business accommodation and Fridays Saturdays really quiet and we weren't attracting that leisure, um, pleasure, leisure, as we call it, mm -hmm. uh, occupancy. And so, yes, the, the grant you're referring to was to do a piece of work to look creatively um, and try and identify where those opportunities might be linking with relevant organisations, events, etc., and trying to understand um, how we could improve that. Uh, and that's that's underway at the moment. It's work in progress. It's not something you can just turn on overnight. Unfortunately, it takes time to build all these things. And mm -hmm. and, and that will link in to a certain extent as well to the tourism strategy that you were talking about. Uh, yeah. So, yes, that's work in progress now. Very good. Very good. <laughs> so, um, Helen, we're running out of time and it's been a real pleasure catching up with you. I think I think Moogie's helped show that there are opportunities to grow um in in this sector particularly if you operate within um uh you know the visitor economy in, in buckinghamshire and there's dots that can be joined up i think diversifying what you offer to for visitors both um local residents in in the local geography and also from further afield and and building your place in in the local community and in in the business community of the county through Buckinghamshire Business First. It's been um, a real pleasure listening to your story. So thank you. 
No, oh, thank you. Thank you very much. It's always a pleasure to talk to you and thanks for all the support from BBF. And um, yes, next time, next time meet you in the pub. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thanks, Philippa.